So another Ro- or Robert again is asking, can a sinner get jealous of and happy for someone else on the same day that he or she met him or her? That's an interesting question, Robert. And I think, I think, yeah, definitely a sinner or anyone can get jealous of and happy for somebody um, just after they meet. And um, I guess I'm a little bit like, t- like wondering kind of um, the why of or where this is coming from as far as your question. But I do want to show you a, um, a few verses really quick just to kind of give you an idea as far as maybe what the cure is for that. If um, you know, if, if that's something you're struggling with or you see that somebody else is struggling with, um, just to be careful with, you know, things like um, jealousy, because, you know, as you probably know, um, coveting, which is like a form of jealousy, is, you know, the 10th commandment, thou shalt not covet. God calls us not to be jealous of other people and their things. Um, you know, in Exodus 20, 17, that's um, God's call for his people. But for sinners, is it very possible for them to feel all these mix of feelings? Absolutely. And especially if you're not being controlled by God's Holy Spirit and bringing, um, you know, your thoughts um, into captivity, you know, basically just, you know, realigning your heart with God's will, uh, which is to, to get rid of jealousy, (laughs) because, you know, if we're happy and content with what God has given us, then, then that's really where God wants us to be. But I do want to share with you a few verses in the book of James chapter four, and it's just the first part of this chapter. And it basically kind of talks about this idea in James four verses one through um, seven and eight, basically that's seven and eight are like the cure of, of this problem. And so James one or James chapter four, verse one says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members or basically in your body? Um, You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3, basically, or you do ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. And so in verse 4, he says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So you really can't have both of those things, being happy for somebody and being jealous at the same time, like those things are kind of warring against each other. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. In verse five, it says, or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us, um, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. So basically the Holy Spirit desires our love and our worship and not in our affection and not to put our affection on other things. And in verse six, he says, but he gives more grace. God gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And so here we're seeing that basically God, um, you know, if we're fighting, you know, these feelings inside of us, God can give, you know, he'll resist the proud. If you're saying I am this way and that's just who I am, God is not going to, God is going to resist you. But if, you know, if you're humble, and you're saying, Lord, I am struggling with this, God will give grace to you and help you through this situation. And really the cure for these kinds of feelings, because, you know, even a Christian can struggle with jealousy sometimes, you know, you might see somebody with something really nice and go, God, you know, why didn't you bless me with that? Um, But, you know, we, again, we have to bring every (laughs) thought into captivity to the, you know, to, um, like it says in second Corinthians chapter 10, um, you know, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We want to make sure our thoughts are in harmony with God's will. And so again, going back to James chapter four, uh, verses seven and eight, kind of give us the cure to this problem of, you know, jealousy and covetousness and, you know, striving for things that, you know, that we want that maybe are not in accordance to God's will, or just, it's, you know, it's not, it's never in accordance to God's will for us to, you know, covet or or be jealous of other people. And so verses seven and eight say, therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And in verse eight says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And so basically, and then verse 10, I think is the best advice of all. Again, saying, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And so, you know, whatever it is, you know, bring these feelings, bring these desires to God you know, humbly saying, Lord, I, you know, I'm struggling with, you know, jealousy of, of, you know, my friend's spouse or my friend's house or my friend's car or whatever it is. And, you know, if we're humble, we can, you know, God can help us be, you know, cleansed of these 
you know, impure thoughts or feelings. And then, um, but on the contrary, if we are not, you know, they're, they're just going to run rampant and yeah, you can feel like you can pretend you're happy for somebody, but really inside you have those bad feelings of jealousy and which can lead to worse sins. And so, um, I just pray that as you, you know, walk with God, that you would, you know, submit again, <laughs> take those, take that good advice that Paul gives us in second Corinthians chapter 10, um, verses four and five, basically that, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You know, we're not fighting flesh and blood here. We're fighting something spiritual, you know, which is something you don't see. And we have to um, bring every thought, every feeling that we have into the captivity, to the obedience of Christ, that we, you know, we surrender those feelings and let God be the one that leads us in our minds and in our hearts. So Jay or Wendy, anything else on that one? Nope. That sounded really good. Praise God. Yeah, I think, uh, I guess the only thing I would add is that the key is to surrender to God in all God's ways and his plans in all things. So when we are tempted with those things, then that's just an indication that there's something that we need to surrender to God. And if we take it as that, we can have an instant shift in our emotions and go from feeling jealous to feeling happy. It's the emotions can shift in an instant. Amen. That's very true.